the Death Star DLC has brought a ton of new content to Star Wars Battlefront, meaning there is a lot of stuff you need to know how to use to not only help you survive, but also so you can use it to your advantage and get more kills. Today I'll be taking you through 10 important tips about weapons, maps, and even star cards that will help you survive the Death Star DLC. My name is Connor and welcome to Star Wars Central. The Death Star DLC has brought some interesting new things to Battlefront to say the least. So today I'll be taking you through 10 tips not only to survive and avoid being killed by some of this new content, but also tips that should help you win the game modes and get more kills. So let's begin. Tip number one, don't stand by blast doors. People have a lot of grenades and it's very easy to spam them. Not to mention it's the most obvious place to stand and they will be aiming there. Also, you'll have more of a chance at getting kills if you outflank behind your enemy. Most people actually don't check their corners, so take the flank and get behind them. Moving on to tip number two, Space Battles currently has half of you guys flying in circles, confused and drifting because you've got no idea what to do or really how to fly. And that's okay. At some point we were all terrible at piloting X-Wings and TIE Fighters. And if I'm going to be honest, most of the people topping the leaderboards are people like me that play way too much Fighter Squadron. But to help you guys get better, here are some tips. Only pick the X-Wing and the TIE Interceptor. Don't pick the TIE Fighter because it's literally that bad, and you won't know the tactics for the A-Wing, so don't bother with that either. Just focus on playing the objective and saving your teammates. As long as you watch your friendlies back, you're doing your job. It doesn't really matter if you're halfway down or at the bottom of the scoreboard. All that matters is you cover the pilots that can carry the team for you. Also, don't forget to never bite off more than you can chew. If needs be, let the enemy players get distracted by the AI first and then engage them. Moving on to tip number three, play the objective. I really shouldn't have to say this. The game has been out for what, nine months? And still, I see players complaining when their team loses whilst having the lowest objective score of anyone on their team. If you want to win, play the objective. I spent five hours on Battle Station yesterday and about half of those games never made it past the first stage. And it's not because the Rebels had bad pilots or the vehicles are bad, the stage is literally designed so the Rebels win most of the time. The real reason we lost over and over again is because only me and maybe two others actually cared about the objectives. I'll be perfectly honest here, you lose the right to complain about not winning a game when you do nothing to help your team win the game. Either you play the objective or you go play Fighter Squadron. End of discussion. Moving on to tip number four, and this one is going to sound pretty weird. When playing as Bosk, run away. He doesn't have much health and his abilities are geared towards luring the enemy to you. If you get a chance, disable R2-D2 but stay away from the main fight. You can't tank damage like Chewbacca can, and it ruins his self-healing potential if you take tons of damage in short periods of time. Another tip for Bosk is to make sure you drop his Dioxys grenade on the objective. At the very least, you are helping the team, and on a good day, it pretty much guarantees you a couple of kills. Finally, if possible, remember to use his predatory vision. You get a damage upgrade when using it, and it has no cooldown. Not to mention it makes hitting rebels hiding behind cover and smoke much, much easier. Anyway, next up I have some Chewbacca tips at tip number 5. Chewbacca can tank, so use that to your advantage. But remember, your team are relying on you to get R2-D2 out. Save your abilities for securing R2-D2, and if he gets recaptured, use your ground slam and team buff to ensure a rebel victory. Also, if you see Bosk, do not chase him, that's what he wants. Just focus on the objective and try and support the team any way you can. If that means sacrificing yourself and soaking up damage to clear a path, then so be it. Also, don't use your ground slam head on. Save it for when you get behind the enemy, that way they don't know you're coming and they will have less time to get out of the way, netting you more kills and helping the rebels win. Moving on to the most important tip I'm going to give you guys today. Unlock the TL-50 heavy repeater as soon as possible. It should be the first hut contract you unlock. The easiest way to get it is to play blast with any heavy blaster. 
The reason is you have to get 75 kills with a heavy blaster which will take at least a couple of games. So get grinding and unlock the weapon as fast as possible. Trust me, you won't regret it. The TL50's basic fire mode is full automatic and has the fastest fire rate of any weapon in Star Wars Battlefront. A full 100 rounds per minute faster than any other blaster. And if that wasn't overpowered enough, it has very little recoil or muzzle climb making it very easy to get headshots and keep the weapon hitting the target. Not to mention if you hold down the aim button you charge the TL50's secondary fire ability. The secondary fire ability of the TL-50 charges effectively a grenade launcher which is called a Concussion Blast. The Concussion Blast is so powerful that if you hit your enemy it's pretty much a guaranteed kill. Which means all you have to do is aim at your opponents and watch the kill feed pop up. Now moving on to tip number 7. If you have a spare star card slot then carry the back to bomb wherever possible. It's not for you however, it's for your team. The Death Star DLC has introduced new environments that focus on small, tight-cornered corridors with closing blast doors and very little room to move away from grenades. Every chance you get, throw the back to bomb at your teammates in the middle of the map. You're not trying to help them win, the middle on both sides is a lost cause and it's just a mess of blaster fire and grenades, but you can't afford to lose it either. If the middle opens up because your teammates get wiped out by a lucky grenade or the new concussion blast then you're going to have some serious problems. Because the enemy can then use the entrance corridors to completely outflank your position and exploit the opening in your line. That and you'll get a lot of healing points which will increase your score and ultimately the amount of credits you'll make at the end of the game. Moving on to tip number 8, when on the final stage of the battle station mode you die and respawn, always select the wingman option if it's available. I've noticed a lot of people don't know what this means so let's take a look. Each team, both the rebels and the imperials have a hero for the third and final stage. The rebels get Luke in his red 5 x-wing and the imperials get Darth Vader in his tie advanced. When these heroes are in use teammates can spawn in on them as wingmen. The same way you can spawn as a royal guard on the emperor and an honor guard on princess Leia. These wingmen vehicles have more health and are generally just better than standard vehicles. They also put you right back into the action which not only saves you time but also helps you focus on the objective. For example if you play as a wingman on Luke's Red 5 X-Wing be sure to cover the pilots assigned to the trench run. Don't waste time killing AI fighters or players that are not playing the objective, focus on getting your pilots safely to the exhaust port. Alternatively, if you're an Imperial Wingman, use the element of surprise to go straight after the trench run targets and make sure they don't reach the exhaust port. If the pilot of the hero is too busy racking up kills instead of playing the objective then it falls to you to hunt down the rebels. Next up at tip number 9, when placing a medical droid be sure to position it away from the door and close to other teammates. As you probably know, the medical droid heals yourself and teammates by spreading Bacter like a Bacter bomb within its radius. Its radius is pretty big, so you should be able to cover most of a room, however they are incredibly weak. Just a quick burst and your medical droid will be destroyed, meaning no more heals. So be sure to get it as far away from explosions and blaster fire as you can. If possible, place it in a recess that will shield it from any explosions at the blast doors. This also means the enemies coming through the door won't be able to see it and destroy it as they enter the room. Of course it still gets destroyed from time to time and the medical droid does have a limited number of healing bursts. So please make sure you keep an eye on it and periodically replace it whenever you get a chance. And moving on to our final tip, tip number 10, for the love of all things holy stop equipping the jetpack on the Death Star. The jetpack on the Death Star maps is completely useless, the only real benefit is the ability to get on top of the crashed rebel transport, which is only effective in the final moments of the second phase of the battle station game mode. Just swap it out for a scattergun, back to bomb, even a thermal detonator would be better. Just please stop using the jetpack. Anyway that's it for my 10 tips to survive the Death Star DLC. I'm sure you guys also have some great tips to give other players as well. So if you have a tip for Fighter Squadron, Battle Station or even the Trench Run then leave it in the comments below. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, if you want more Star Wars content just like this then please consider subscribing. I'll see you next time and may the Force be with you.